Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, first of all, before I start on this week's case, I want to give a massive thanks to those of you that watched my um, video last week, which was based around the Netflix show The Pharmacist, which is obviously a true crime case, something really interesting. I've just really moved into true crime recently as it's something I've always been very interested in, um, something I very much, very closely almost studied at university, forensics. Um, unfortunately, family, health and stuff got in the way, but I've long since, long and many a day since then, held a massive interest in true crime. Previously on this channel, Lisa Loves, I have mostly had um, film content, mostly horror, as I'm a big horror fan, but I'm moving more into true crime and away from movie reviews. Um, I'm just not, I watch a lot of movies, folks. I'm not getting time to do as many reviews as I would like. So with this, um, I sort of aim to do a case per week and um, I will still be doing my once a month, what I've watched in the previous month. So if you're new there, that's basically just every movie I've watched in a month um, and a very quick, was it any good? What was it like? What roughly was it about? Is it worth you watching? So um, if you enjoy movies as well, then hopefully there may be something there for you. But um, we'll move on to the case for this week. I just wanted to give a massive thank you. Um, as my channel's very small, I'm working on growing it. Um, and last week's video did get an awful lot more views than I would be used to. I was very shocked and surprised and delighted. So I wanted to say a big thank you to you. Um, if you haven't subscribed as yet, I would very much appreciate it. The odd like would be very nice as well. But moving on to this week's case. So I'm gonna to talk to you this week about um, a case that's referred to as the body in the pool. This is very well known within the UK. Um, I myself am from Ireland, um, but obviously in Ireland we're very much aware of this also. It maybe won't be so well known in the States if you're watching from there, but it's based around a very, very famous TV personality and presenter in the UK by the name of Michael Barrymore. He was the sort of like taken to the hearts of the public. He was very beloved in the UK. Um, and he is very central to this case. So um, it was covered last week on UK television um, and I watched it and was prompted and really wanted to, to talk to you and see what you think of it. So we go back to the 31st of March, 2001 and the police would receive a telephone call in the morning 5.48 a.m. from 4 Palmont Park Drive in Croydon stating that um, they have just pulled a young man from the pool of the property um, and he's not breathing. The body would be that of 31-year-old Stuart Lubbock, um, very well known within the community. He was a local butcher and had been described by his wife um, as devoted and a loving husband. Now, this case is very much about Stuart and Stuart's unfortunate death, but um, to sort of get an idea into the case um, and the furore surrounding it and a lot of um, secrecy surrounding it, we really do need to know the involvement of the owner of the property, Michael Barrymore who is a very well-known British TV celebrity. As a child, I very much was aware of Michael Barrymore growing up. Um, he very famously fronted a TV, TV show called Strike It Lucky, um, later known as Strike It Rich. He was actually described as TV executives as TV gold. He would take risks that other performers and entertainers wouldn't. He very much connected with his audience. He was very hands-on, very... Um, funny, witty, um, a housewife's favourite, I suppose you could refer to him as, um, and he won copious awards um, for his presenting, for his entertaining skills, and he was someone that the British public very much took to their heart. In fact, in 1999, two years before this incident, he was actually given a special recognition award at the NTA, the National Television Awards, so he very much was someone that was well-liked um, and very popular within the UK entertainment scene. The tide did turn in Michael's popularity. On the 19th of August 1995, um, Michael decided to come out. Uh, Michael was married, um, but he was gay. And he sort of chose a very strange way to do this. He went to a club um, to watch a drag queen perform by the name of Dave, Dave Lynn. And through the show, um, Michael had had a few drinks. He got on stage um, and he sang many numbers with the drag queen. He was having a whale of a time, loving it. Um, and he whispered in this gentleman's ear, I think I'm gay tonight. And the press immediately got hold of the story. Um, the Sun newspaper sent a reporter there immediately to pap him as he came out of the club. 
and of course it hit the headlines immediately. This was 1995, which isn't that long ago, but the public were still pretty conservative about same-sex relationships at that stage, um, and it sort of was, was put alongside moral ambiguity, which is absolutely ridiculous, but unfortunately back then, by a lot of very conservative people, that was the thought. So it was wondering, would Michael actually survive this? Would his career survive this? Would he still be Mr. Popular, Mr. TV? But thankfully, um, the vast majority of the public really did not care, and they were fine with the fact Michael was gay. In fact, there was an outpouring of support for him, um, so his career went pretty much untarnished. And in the next set of NTAs, he was actually nominated for three awards and won all three, including Most Popular TV Presenter. So moving on to the night in question. It's the 31st of March 2001 and Stuart has gone out for a night out with his brother Kevin. They've gone to Millennium Nightclub in Essex. Just for a good night, the brothers got along well, they were very close and they just went out to let their hair down and have a bit of fun. Unbeknown to them, Michael Barrymore would actually be in that nightclub, um, and this was a bit of a scoop. As I say, he's very popular, and um, Stuart was a big fan. He was very taken by him. Now, I would stress Stuart was straight. Stuart was not gay. Um, he had been happily married. Unfortunately, the marriage did not work out, but Stuart was not gay. Stuart was very straight. Um, it was discussed that potentially Stuart could have been sexually interested in Michael or some of his friends, but that his family and his friends very much dispute was not the case. He very much admired Michael, he liked him as a TV personality, he was a big fan, so um, they really wanted to meet him. So they made their way to where they knew he was in the club, um, just, just to meet a famous person like you do. Um, and one of the ladies that worked for Michael Barrymore actually went up to Stuart and whispered something in his ear. His brother Kevin saw this and was a bit concerned what's going on here and with that Stuart left very quickly down the stairs and um, what transpires later is that Stuart had actually been invited back to Michael's home with quite a few friends of his and they were going to have a party. Um, Michael was not in a very good state um, when it comes to alcohol. Michael had consumed an awful lot of alcohol. So to sort of like support the fact that Michael really had had a bit too much to drink, um, there's a taxi driver called Keith Miller that actually took him and Stuart um, and some other people back to Michael's house. He noticed very quickly the state that Michael was in. Um, he said he was in a drunken stupor. He was actually a bit concerned for Michael um, as he felt these people were maybe taking advantage, were maybe wanting to case his house out and, and maybe rob him. Um, so he was sort of keeping an eye uh, and Michael did seem to be very much past the point of safe drinking. At one stage, Michael did lean forward and whisper into the driver's ear, something that is a little crude. Um, how do I try and put this across to you without being... It's a, he said, I could really do with a F right now, um, which the driver was a bit taken back by, but he ignored it. Michael slumped back in his seat and pretty much didn't say anything else for the rest of the journey home. So they arrive. The party starts at Michael's house at 2.47 a.m. So it's quite early in the morning and we don't really have much information of exactly what took place there. We do know that drugs were consumed and that cocaine was evident there. A lot of alcohol had been consumed also. But the next real definite piece of information we are aware of is the telephone that comes in at 5.48 a.m. Um, saying that a body has been discovered in the pool um, and it's been removed from the pool but the individual does not seem to be breathing. They did try to perform CPR as someone there was trained but um, they were unsuccessful. Um, police and ambulance crews arrived on scene but there wasn't anything really that they could do to help Stuart at this stage. At 8.23 a.m. he was officially pronounced dead at hospital. Now, unfortunately, as I said, the, the events of what transpired at the house are very much, um, maybe some admitted and denied by certain people. There seems to be a real secrecy pact happening here from the people that were at, that were there, um, including Michael Barrymore's partner, friends. Um, I think there were about eight people present. Um, and some information has come out but has been strongly refuted. Um, I will say that Michael did definitely leave the scene as soon as the ambulance was called and he saw Stuart's body in the pool. He later said he panicked. Um, he obviously wasn't in a very good mental state as he had consumed an awful lot of alcohol so his reasoning skills he said were not really evident. 
um, but he panicked and he imagined the massive press outcry, especially with him having come out and a lot of people having issue with that. Um, a young man is found in his pool, deceased, and he panicked and he ran. Now, one of the girls that was actually there did make one statement. Her name was Kylie. She stated that Michael Barrymore did actually try to rub cocaine into Stuart's gums and Stuart tried to move his head away, but Barrymore told them to do it anyway. Um, Michael Barrymore has completely denied this allegation and he refuses to talk about any drug consumption within his property on that night. Although from things that were found on site, we do know that that did actually happen. But Michael just will not discuss the issue whatsoever. Now, oddly, there were numerous um, different coroners called into this case and there were several autopsies performed. Different people looked at Stuart's body, but what was agreed um, with all of the people that, all of the coroners, um, that Stuart had high levels of cocaine and MDMA in his system and that he had very serious um, anal injuries, tears um, and it was said by the coroner that these could not in any way have possibly occurred during consensual sex so it very much appeared that Stuart had been assaulted. Michael on the other hand is completely adamant that this did not happen within his home but um, there is CCTV footage available of Stuart leaving the club en route to Michael's and he was completely fine at this stage and had no signs that there was any form of massive injury that he later was found to have. Some of the explanations or the potential explanations given for these injuries were ridiculous, one of which would be that Stuart dive bombed into the, the pool and perhaps landed on something, but there was nothing in the pool. Another explanation was that the rectal thermometer that was used by by the staff, the paramedics or hospital staff, caused these injuries. Um, again, these injuries were pretty catastrophic. They were massive injuries and could not possibly have been caused by a rectal thermometer, which is made for that very purpose. It is not going to cause the level of injuries we saw on Stuart. So when a verdict was actually asked for on what had happened to Stuart, I'll read it here just to make sure I get nothing wrong. None of the guests have given a satisfactory explanation as to why Stuart was found in the pool with these levels of drugs in his system. But it's recorded as an open verdict. It wasn't actually recorded as murder or as assault. It's just recorded as an open verdict. So Terry Lubbock, Stuart's father, is told that his son has unfortunately died um, and the family just go through complete hell. Obviously, they have just lost a beloved son, but also because of the nature of where he was found and who is involved, the press were very much interested in this case. They camped outside their house. They couldn't leave the home. We even had a, on the television program I watched, which was called Body in the Pool, um, there were even newspaper reporters that admitted to dressing up what a good tactic was. He dressed up in a dark blue, very smart suit and he just went and called on the door and insinuated, by, without actually saying that he was actually a detective working on the case. Um, and they let him in and started to answer his questions. It was only when they asked specifically, you know, what area and what branch they worked in, what their name was, that he said, oh no, no, I'm not with the police. I'm not a detective. I work for, I think it was News of the World at the time, which is just disgusting, really. It, it's just anything for a story. These people's lives have been ruined, have been torn apart, and they're just interested in a bit of a juicy story for tomorrow's edition. As well as hounding the family of poor Stuart, um, the News of the World reporter actually also admitted that they have a fund set aside, blackmail money if you like, um, and they actually offered to pay Michael's partner um, £60,000 for basically to sell Michael out if he was involved, what exactly happened, we'll pay you £60,000 for the story. Another gentleman that was there called Justin, he was actually offered 30000 for his side of the, the story, but it seems that um, everyone kept quiet and no one has really said anything of what really took place there that night. Another strange thing about the case is that, um, now Michael did say that two guests at the party jumped in and pulled Stuart out. He panicked and ran off. Um, he was asked did he make no attempt to go in to help? And he said he didn't because he can't swim. Now, Michael Barrymore's wife has actually said that Michael can swim. Um, his friends have said he can swim. 
and his wife said I can give you the names of 12 individuals that he has actually been swimming with on holiday and at different times to confirm for you that Michael did, can, can swim. So I, I have no idea why he would tell this ridiculous lie. So following all of this and while the investigation was ongoing, uh, Michael Barrymore was actually suspended from ITV um, as the comedy element of his show was not seen to be fitting with what he had been accused of and the investigation which was currently happening and the public did seem to be losing favour with Michael as it seemed an awful lot of what happened wasn't adding up um, and eventually he kept quiet for a long time and refused to speak but eventually he was persuaded to take part in a TV interview with um, on The Tonight Show um, a lot of people in the UK will know was run by Trevor McDonald a very well respected British newscaster he was interviewed by Martin Bashir, who very famously conducted that famous um, Princess Diana interview. Um, so he's, he doesn't pull any punches. Martin Bashir will get in there and he will ask the questions that he needs to ask. And he interviewed Michael and it's the first time really the public got any answers from Michael as to his view of what happened that night. So the British public are there thinking that they're gonna get some answers um, and all that Michael really will say is that there were there was no sex in the house that evening there was no orgies that he was aware of and to this day he does not know what happened to Stuart that didn't really go down very well um, publicly I don't think an awful lot of people believed Michael but Michael really needed um, to get away from the limelight uh, public feeling toward him was not very favorable at this stage now earlier I mentioned that several autopsies had been performed on Stuart and different things were found in each case. Um, it's very, very unusual. I'm actually going to read some of these to you so that I don't make any mistakes. So on the second post-mortem by a gentleman called Dr. Ian Calder, um, he's an expert on drowning and he um, said that there were heavy lungs but they weren't showing classic signs of drowning. There were also petechiae present, um, which obviously is little red um, dots or like blood vessels that burst usually in the eyes. And that's very significant. It usually is indicative of strangulation or compression. Um, so he has said um, petechiae present, neck compression. Um, also, there was a lot of blood in a cloth that had been wrapped around um, Stuart's groin area. Um, he was bleeding from the anus. There was dilation of the anal canal. He had injuries consistent with tearing, abrasions and bruising. His injuries were horrific. Um, and this and other autopsies w was not really listed as the cause. Like Initially he'd been listed as a drowning victim. So on the 9th of September 2002 there was an inquest into Stuart's death. This was not a trial by any stretch of the imagination, this was just looking into what happened. Michael Barrymore was represented by Michael Mansfield, who's a very, very high profile solicitor. He's a hard hitter. He um, was representative in the Bloody Sunday case and also famously um, in the Stephen Lawrence case. So this guy has been very much involved in very high profile, very serious cases. And again, Michael walks out of court with no real answers from anyone, still in complete denial about anything having happened at his home that evening, saying that he ran because he was frightened, he was drunk, and he was frightened of when the press arrived. Um, there was also um, allegations made that his the police had not properly secured the scene, um, and a publicist for Michael had been in and out of that scene, and it said that he was seen around particular evidence. So Stuart's underwear, a towel and a robe that were at the scene and had been bloodstained, um, because the scene was not properly secured, these items went missing. And it has actually been suggested that a member of Michael's team went in there and removed these. Um, he strongly refutes that, but um, the police have admitted that there were a catalogue of errors that evening. Even though there, were, there was blood present, um, it was ruled as a drowning and the proper precautions on that scene, the proper protection that should have happened on that scene didn't. So the the chances for removal of evidence was very much there for, for it to happen. So Michael disappears from the spotlight for a while um, and he moves away. But on the 30th of September 2002, um, Michael Barrymore would appear on our televisions again, um, being interviewed on GMTV by Fiona Phillips and Eamon Holmes. He was in a hotel in Dubai 
Um, and he claimed that he had been contacted, they had found a nurse that had worked in the hospital on the evening of Stuart's admission, and that she claimed that when he was admitted, that none of the injuries, none of the inju the anal injuries were there, and that these potentially happened in the hospital. Now, obviously, when Stuart arrived at the hospital, it was too late to save him, and anyone with any knowledge of forensics, even of injuries, there was severe bruising present, um, bleeding, and if these injuries happened post-mortem, then the bruising would not be present because bruising only happens when the person is alive. But following this information given, the police had to open the case again. And on the 13th of January 2003, the police um, gave a statement that they were looking into the situation again, following the information received from Michael Barrymore, and um, would let, the, let us know of their findings. At this stage, um, Michael has always protested his innocence and he seemed like he had the trump card here, he felt he did. And at this stage he said he would be back on stage performing within four to six months. And later that year on the 15th of November 2003, Michael appeared on stage at the Wyndham Theatre um, to a crowd of a few hundred and he, he did not go down well at all. Um, people just did not want to see him. There is footage of his performance on stage and People just are uncomfortable. He is uncomfortable. He, it's just, it's painful to watch. Um, he just should not have been on that stage. And I think he realized at that stage that perhaps coming back to the limelight, coming back to the UK, perhaps wasn't the best decision for him. A member of the public actually was at that show and described sitting through it with a knot in her stomach and sweating palms, realizing that she was watching a desperate man and she just felt insanely uncomfortable. Um, and that was Michael's last real appearance um, on stage in that capacity for quite some time. And later on that year, on the 10th of December 2003, the police report was back into the allegations that the injuries happened at hospital and 16 experts, including medical professionals and pathologists, all concurred that the injuries happened when Stuart was alive and that the allegations and notions of necrophilia was just fanciful. With this news, ITV completely dropped Barrymore. They didn't renew his contract and he moved to New Zealand. Meanwhile, um, Stuart's poor father, Terry, is not in the best of health and he still frantically, desperately wants to know what happened to his son. And he hires a publicist called Harry a apologise if I pronounce this name wrong, Harikichi, C-I-C-H-Y, um, with the intention to go to New Zealand and have it out with Barrymore face to face and to ask him, father of the, the boy that died in his pool, what happened to my son? What can you tell me? But little did they know when they intended to make this trip that Michael was actually intending to come back to the UK for quite a large television appearance. So in 2006, Michael actually goes into the Big Brother house. Um, it's a celebrity show. Um, he goes in there and the public actually start to warm to him. He goes into rapturous applause. Um, he's very moved by this. He cries. Um, people seem to have forgotten what happened. And the man that they knew before all of this happened seems to be the man that's winning out. Um, but there are still many, many questions. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Michael Barrymore! Actually, we're not going to get him in the house. <laughs> Stuart's father, Terry, turns up with a sign. Um, asking what happened to his son, but the, the security, the very high security at the, the television studios of Big Brother um, disallow them from entering, so they're not allowed to enter. Um, when he was on that actual show, which I watched myself, I am a big Big Brother fan, um, someone was interviewed, a member of the public, um, and they actually said, I like him. We've all done something in the past that's stupid that we regret. And I thought, potentially in these videos, I'm maybe not supposed to make my, make my viewpoints clear, but really? I've went out and had a few too many drinks and had a stupid photograph taken in the past. I've not been present at a murder and then scarpered and claimed to know nothing about it. 
I'm not saying Michael is complicit in this murder. I'm not saying he isn't. But I do believe that he knows much, much more than has been told to the police, that has been told to the public. Um, incidentally, in that show of Big Brother, he actually came in second and um, beaten, ironically, by the only member of the house that was not a celebrity and came out to, to the crowd loving him all over again. After this show, Michael popped up all over television. He was on The Week It's Blink, he was on The Graham Norton Show. Um, he was having his time in the sunshine once again. And another investigation is opened again and Michael says that he is in full support of this as he, himself, also wants to know what happened. So on the 14th of June 2007, um, Stuart Father Terry's publicist receives a telephone call to say that three people have been arrested in the case of the death of his son, one of which is Michael Barrymore. Another is the gentleman that made the 911 call that evening and the third, another gentleman that was present at the party. John Kinney, the partner, and Justin Merritt. Harlow Police Station said at that stage that they had 18 new leads. But after questioning, they were all released. Crime prosecution said that there was insufficient evidence to proceed with prosecution, leaving us to wonder what those 18 new leads possibly were, but we would never find out. It was at this stage that Stephen Jennings, who was the fifth SIO to, to deal with this case, speaking on behalf of the police, actually admitted that there had been gross um, errors on part of the police, especially at the scene on the evening of Stuart's death. Um, and he came forward and made that admission and said that a lot could have been done differently by the police that would perhaps by this stage have had a different result into the investigation. It was at this stage also that it was brought up, as I said earlier, um, Michael's publicist Mike Brown had been allowed unrestricted access to the scene that night and two items that had been photographed by the police, which was a door handle and a pull thermometer were nowhere to be found. They went missing that same evening. So the next time stamp we have is the 24th of June 2007 where Barrymore actually texts the police to the High Court claiming compensation and saying he should never even have been arrested as evidence against him was weak at best. And it was announced following this that nominal damages were actually paid to Michael Barrymore. Um, he wanted two million um, but the police actually won their appeal against this. A lot of stuff came out during this case that wasn't previously known. The main conclusion from this was that given the times of everyone that was there and movements, three people had the time to commit this murder and Michael Barrymore was one of them. I would only imagine that the other two were the two gentlemen that were arrested with Michael several years earlier and had been released through lack of evidence. Six months after this, um, Michael Barrymore pops up on Pierce Morgan's life stories. Um, I'm sure everyone knows who Pierce Morgan is. In the UK, he does a chat show where he interviews celebrities and he tends to get a bit deeper and grittier. Um, and everyone was very interested to see this interview with Michael Barrymore to see if Pierce would delve in and ask those questions that other people were perhaps afraid to ask. Um, and Michael seemed to use this as a publicity stunt where he cried and he maintained that he didn't know what had happened and that his life had been ruined and I'm not a person to sit here and say that that's not true. That is potentially true but I can only speak from my feelings and my gut and while I'm not saying that Michael is responsible for Stuart's death, I'm not saying he isn't either. I do feel that more is known and I do feel that he should not have left that scene and he is using people's sympathy now um, as a manner to get him back into the spotlight and people again gave him rapturous applause and, and really felt for the man that they once loved that was sat there crying about his experience and his pain and his life all the while Terry Lubbock is still seeking answers for the murder of his son. And in December 2019 Barrymore is announced as one of the contestants on ITV's Dancing on Ice. So he's right back into the, the middle of things, right back into the old family entertainment scene. Um, and is he making a comeback? Who knows? So to end it all, I just wrote a few notes um, on what I'd read had happened since that date. Um, Barrymore solicitors are now saying it's most likely, get ready for this folks, brace yourselves, it's most likely that Stuart fell and hurt himself on the pool edge. Barrymore left just to avoid the media for no other reason. 
Um, it's been said that all eight people that were at that party were approached and asked to comment on the documentary that went out about this case um, and all eight declined. The Essex Police have appointed another new investigator into this case and are hoping since 19 years have passed since it happened that loyalties may have changed and someone may come forward with further information and they have offered £40,000 for anyone that does this. I just want to leave it with a comment from Stuart's ex-wife, someone he was very devoted to. That marriage did not work out but they remained very good friends um, and his wife said, and this is very fitting, and given how much of this video even was about Michael Barrymore and not about Stuart, because we don't know anything about what happened to Stuart that evening, because no one will talk, no one will say what happened that evening. And Stuart's ex-wife said, Stuart has been lost in all this. It's now all about Barrymore. And that's exactly what it is. Um, it's sad, we do need to know what happened to Stuart Lubbock, um, a 31 year old young man, very popular, taken down in the prime of his life, and none of us have any answers as to what happened and why. Um, his father is in poor health, um, he's in residential care, um, and I really hope for his sake that he gets some answers to, to what happened to his son um, before he's no longer here. Um, was Michael responsible, was he not? Will we ever know? I'm not sure. Um, I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts in the case. Um, if you're from the UK, were you a fan of Michael Barrymore? I was um, back when I was much, much younger. I was a child when he was on telly um, in his heyday. And I was very shocked um, when this all happened. But Michael's behaviours since, um, the concoction of the nurse that could say that the injuries were not there when he entered hospital, it all stinks to me. Um, I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. Um, let me know below in the comments. If there's any cases you would potentially like to see me cover, um, I'd be happy to do that. Just let me know. And if you like this video, um, I'd really appreciate a little thumbs up. And even if you click that subscribe button, I should be eternally grateful. It's over a night. Family still loves.